In this video, we're going to cover some of the stuff that's at the end of chapter one and talk a little bit more about the C++ programming language, how it differs from Python, how we're going to go about creating our programs and running our programs. Okay, So some of this is a repeat of uh, what we saw before, but some of it will, will, will be new. Okay, And a review is never a bad thing. So it starts. So I'm on a Mac again. So um, if you're on a Mac, you can either use the terminal program that's built in, or I use a terminal app called Warp that I like pretty well. That does a good job. Um, if you're on a Windows computer, you have to download Putty, and there's another video that goes through that. It's, you get it from putty.org. But in any case, uh, I'm going to use the SSH protocol. I'm then going to put in my username, okay, which is the first part of my email before the app. I'm going to do an at the name of the computer, ludwig.mcs for math and computer science, .uvawise.edu. Okay, that's how I connect in. The first time that you connect in, um, and you have to do the password here. The first time you connect into the server from a different computer, it will give you something about the RSA fingerprint. Do you accept it? Say yes, and it won't ask you that again on that same computer. It shouldn't. Okay, you're just verifying that you are connecting to the server that you know that you're connecting to, if that makes any sense. Okay, so remember once we're in Linux, we're logged onto the server, it doesn't do much for us, it doesn't tell us much, okay? So I can do a PWD, the, the present working directory, it tells me I, I'm in my home directory. There's a home directory that contains everyone's um, home directory. Okay, so mine's slash home slash DEF3QU. Okay, and if you're used to Windows, which uses backslashes, these are regular old slashes, okay? So in the other video, and in class, uh, we're going to go through and make sure that you've set up a directory for this class, okay? So I'm going to do a, a CD for change directory and to CSC 1180, okay? Then LL lists files there. <clears throat> you see I've got a bunch of stuff, but you won't have a bunch of stuff, okay? So... We're going to create a program. This is from the textbook, but we're going to talk about why we're doing it here. Okay. We have to start with a text file, which is our source code. Okay. It's written in C, which is a high level language, um, similar to Python, but different in some ways. Okay. I suggest you use the Emacs editor. So I'm going to type in Emacs on the screen. I'm going to call this first program.cpp. Okay. So Emacs space first program.cpp. <laughs> so that file name shouldn't have uh, any spaces. It can have an underscore between the first and program if you like, but I prefer to use what's called a camel cap where I make program a capital P, everything else lowercase. In Unix um, and Linux, because Linux is based on Unix, case matters. So if I would try to pull up this program as first program with a capital F and a capital P, it would not be the same program. It would be two different programs, okay? So when I do this, it's going to pop up to this. It's going to say nothing, okay? One thing I will tell you that you have a mouse, you have these little things at the top, but you can't get to them. So pretend they're not there. Not sure why they're there, okay? So we're just going to type stuff in. So if you look in the book, the first thing we're going to say, we're going to do an include, okay? So remember in Python, we would add, uh, we would import math or import whatever. This is the same idea, okay? Um, this is an older technology. Um, this is what's called a preprocessor directive in C++. In C++. It means that it's going to do this command before it tries to compile the program, okay? So I'm going to include the IO stream. So since C++ is very modular, without including IO stream, we couldn't do any input and output. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And if you're not going to do any input and output, you wouldn't need to do that. But we usually are, at least at first. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to use do a using namespace standard. Okay. Note, again, unlike Python, C++ requires that you have um, a semicolon at the end, okay? So the semicolon has to be there. Let's not put it there and see what happens. Get in the right spot here. Uh, you notice that it will 
light up as normal. And it didn't give me an error. So it does some it does weird things sometimes. Okay, so it won't this time. So cool, because I wanted it to. Okay. So this using namespace standard, what it, what we're doing that again, it's optional. It's making it simpler when we use things like the C out and C in command. Um, without it, we would have to prepend STD colon colon. And I'll show what that would look like here in a second. But we just do that for simplicity. That's always going to be there. Okay. If the program that you're running, uh, that you're creating, it's going to be ran directly. It's You want it to be an executable program, which means it's not going to be a helper program or a class definition we can talk about later in the class. Uh, so most of our programs now are going to be, so they need a function called int main. Int main is what's called by default when you execute the program, okay? So the int part, which we'll talk more about with functions, uh, the function has to return a type. And, and int main returns an integer. Has to be an in integer. It's just how C++ is created, okay? So if we were in Python and wanted to do a function definition, we would have to have a colon there. Okay, but we don't do that in C++. Okay, instead we're going to do a curly bra brace. Okay, so the opening and closing curly braces are going to define the limits, or which which pro which lines are in int main and which ones are not. Because we could have other functions. We will eventually. Okay, so unlike Python, where it mattered how things were spaced over, none of that matters. Okay. Uh, the editor will space things over for you automatically, uh, and you should space things over because it makes it easier to read, to know what's going on, but it's not required, okay? So um, the only other thing that you need is a return. So we have to return from this function, re return zero. Notice that it spaced it for me automatically, okay? But it doesn't have to be. So the return zero, it's because this function was declared as an int, it's going to return zero, which means things are fine, okay? We could return other things. Um, if you don't put it, it will not always give you an error message, although it should, but it's good form to put it, okay? So uh, other functions, if they have an int in front of them, you have to return an integer or it will give you an error, okay? But this is a little more lenient, okay? So this is all we really need. The program doesn't do anything, but it has all the basic parts to get us started, okay? And I think in the other video I did a Hello World, they do a similar program here. I'm going to use the command called C out. Okay. So if I didn't include the user namespace standard, I would have to do the following. I would have to say STD colon colon C out. And I can still say it and that's fine. But by including it up here, we use it enough. It's not worth typing all that in. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay, so I can just say C out. So what C out's going to do, those two little uh, less than signs, okay, whatever I put next is going to be sent to C out, which is a standard output. And for us, the standard output is the screen, okay? When we get to input, standard input's going to be the keyboard. You can change it to other things, but that's what it is by default, okay? So I'm going to put a string. This is a string literal. I'm not giving it a, a, a variable name, okay? I'm going to say my first C++ program. This may not be strictly true if you went along the other video and did the hello world, but you get the idea, okay? Then I'm going to do an end L. So an end L is the same as this. It's a new line character, okay? But end L is easier to type, I guess. Again, I would need to do this, the std colon colon, if I hadn't included it or used the namespace, but I did, so it's fine. Okay, end L. Okay, that was add a new line character to it. And that's it. That's all we have in this program. Okay. So again, in Emacs, control X, control C to save it. Hit yes, I do want to save it. <clears throat> Actually, control X, control C is to exit. It asks if I want to save. Okay. And then if I do a listing of, um, we've got our first, I can do a first star. You can see that listed here is this first program.cpp. This is today's date and time. This is that I own it, you know, and this uh, is the size of the file. And this, it has read write permission for the world or for me, read write for the group. I just read for anybody else. Okay. So no, no one can change it but me. 
Okay, those are our basic permissions. Okay, so if I want to turn this into a program that I can run, okay, so there's two ways to do this. There's the quick and dirty way, and then there's the more proper way. So let's start with the quick and dirty way. You're going to see me do that a lot. Okay, so unlike my video, I won't do GCC. The GCC is the C compiler that's built in. The G++ is the one we want for C++. Okay, going to just give it the name of the program, first program.cpp. When I run that, I get nothing, okay? Which is a good thing, right? In, in, in the world of Linux, it's a good thing when you hear nothing because it means things are fine. If there were an error, it would have told us there was an error, okay? It doesn't mean that the program is correct or that does what it's supposed to do, but it, it just means that there's no syntax error. Remember we talked about, if you had me at least, we talked about syntax errors last semester, or errors last semester. So the syntax error means there's a problem with the grammar of the language. And the interpreter in the case of Python or the compiler here will uh, not let that pass. It'll tell us what's going on, okay? We have other errors. We have runtime errors we have to test for where something happens during the execution of the program that's wrong, like a divide by zero, and we have semantic errors, which means we just don't know what we're doing, basically. We're, we, our idea of how it's supposed to work is incorrect. Okay, and those you have to, to get someone who knows what they're doing to look at your program, or you have to find external um, results to verify yours. If you're doing a program that, that converts from, from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would have to look up someplace else what the answer should be to make sure you were correct, okay? So I've ran it, so so what? What do I have? So if I do uh, my LS again, and I've got too much stuff here, or my LL, sadly, you will see the very top, which I didn't show, but it is new. If you do not specify a name for the output, you're going to get an A.out, okay? Notice it's in green, and if you look over here, you'll see that it's an executable file. That's what the X stands for over here, okay? So I can execute that file, okay? So I can do a dot slash. Again, if I just do a dot out, it won't be able to find it. The dot slash says in my current directory, okay? So it ha the, to run a program, it has to be in the path, a dot out, okay? And there it runs. We only had the one line, my first C++ program, okay? So nothing particularly new and exciting there, okay? But there's a problem here um, from a usage standpoint, in, in that a dot out doesn't mean anything. Okay, so um, we want to do something differently. Okay, so I'm going to do a GCC. This time I'm going to do a dash o. The dash o is for object. What I want to call the file, I'm going to call this first program. Okay, not CPP, just first program. So I'm putting this in between the GCC and the file name. So then I want first program CPP. Okay. So the dash O goes with this first program. This will be the name of my executable file. Okay. All that's the executable file. Okay. So this is all a piece. And then it's going to execute or it's going to compile the first program CPP. You do that. It, did I do GCC again? I did. I'll get it right eventually. G++. The last time I used a C-like language was actually in C. So, again, nothing. If you ever want to clear stuff up, type in clear, it goes away. Okay, so I can do it again. The G++, nothing. We're good. Okay. So now if I do my LL again, you'll see that in addition to the first program.cpp, there should be, what did I do? What have I done? It should be something called first pr program, but I don't see it. Oh, it's just right here. Yo, yeah, I made a mistake on that. What I normally do, what I what I want you to do is do a dot .exe there. Okay, just run it again. Now when you do it, that's what I was looking for, ll. And we have the first program.cpp and the first program.exe, and that's an executable, okay? So I can go ahead and remove that, do an RM first program. I just want that one to go away. And now if I do an LL, you'll see that the first program's there, 
and the the dot cpp again that's our source code and the first program dot exe is my executable program okay so so you know what's going on in the background okay it we used to have to go through separate steps but it kind of does all in one now so the first thing that happens is the compiler is going to check the source code to make sure there are no syntax errors okay and if not it's going to translate the program into machine language okay into something that the computer can run directly okay so this is called an object program okay so we have a lot of pre-written code that's part of the c plus plus language that's built in for us that, that has to be included so we then go through what's called a linker okay so the linker will pull in the the parts of the language it'll pull in whatever we're um, including, okay, so the, the IO stream is going to come in, for example. All that stuff's going to come in. It's going to be added to our object code to give us our final program, okay? So you'll notice size-wise that our first program.cpp was pretty small, uh, just 113 bytes, but our first program.exe is 16,000 bytes. It's still really small. Uh, in the grand scheme of the world, but it's bigger because all that stuff was put in there, okay? And if you were to look at your exe file, it's going to be pretty ugly. Nope, not a text file. Let me do it. Um, sometimes I'll let you look at it, okay? Um, but it's a bunch of, it'll look like gibberish, okay? But I can use the more command if you just want to take a look, a quick look at your uh, program. You can see it on the screen, but you can't can't edit it. It's not an editor. It just shows it. Okay. And then finally, with our first program dot exe, if I just type it like this, it can't find it. It's not in its path of executables. But if I do a dot slash first program dot exe, then it's going to run. Okay. And it runs the program. And when you're turning stuff in, so how do you turn it on? Well, if you're in your C, uh, uh, CSC 1180 directory and you have a file there, you've turned it in. I'll go in, I'll take a look at it, I'll run it, I'll look at your code, okay? Notice in the syllabus, it gives how uh, I assign points, okay? So programs are worth 10 points. Um, if it works perfectly, it has its comment. I didn't add any comments to mine, but you need comments. A comment block at the top. Um, if it has print statements that that look good, if you've got gone above and beyond the basics and made a nice looking program, you get a ten. The program does everything, but it's not as fancy. You get a nine, and then it comes down. Okay, if your program does not compile, then the highest value you can get is a five. Okay, so if given the choice between taking out one of so if you have a program that's supposed to do three things and one of those things you can't get to work, it won't even compile with that in there. If you do two of the three things, you're probably going to get you know, a seven or an eight in the program. If 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 it compiles, and but you'll want to put in comments, I tried this, here's my code, but it didn't work, and comment out all the code, a slash slash, that you comment, okay? Um, then you, you'll get more points. If it just doesn't compile, you're going to get less points, okay? So again, showing you what the comments, I would want to comment block at the top, slash, slash, put, you know, your name, program name, date, whatever. If you have a block there, you can do a slash star and then a star slash. It gives you a bigger block. Notice it turned red when it was a comment. Okay. So uh, that that's how that works. Um, okay. Um, but then again, let's say you've got another, let's say you have a line you know, S is equal to S plus five. And it doesn't work. If I put a slash slash in front of it, it's no longer there. Okay. It, it ignores it because the compiler ignores all comments. Okay. So that's kind of how that goes. And there's a picture in the book about how all the, the linker and compiler and all that stuff works. Okay. So that's worth looking at, at the end of the chapter. Okay. The other thing it talks about at the end, which is something I always talk about in a programming class, um, 
when we start off in programming uh, and we're in a new language, so we're in some ways, even if you had C plus, if, even if you had Python before, we're kind of back to to baby steps, right? The programs we're going to be doing now are so simple, we're, we tend to just jump in and start programming, okay? But I encourage you as you start, as we start getting more complex programs, okay, that you take the time to plan them out on paper first, to think about what you have to do, to think about the moving parts, um, you'll end up with a much better program if you do that, okay? And kind of the the last part of, of the chapter talks about that. So it starts with understanding what the problem is. I mean, that's the first thing. If you don't know what the problem's asking, you cannot possibly get the, get it right, the program right. So you have to ask me or ask you know the tutor in class, uh, send me an email, whatever. What is this program supposed to do? So that's the first step. You have to be able to solve the problem on paper. If you can't solve it on problem, problem on paper, you can't code it, okay? If I ask you to write a program that, that accepts two integers and gives me the doohickey of those two numbers, I just made up the word doohickey for this in this case. So I don't know what a doohickey does. I can't write a program to do that. So you have to understand it. You have to get a program. You have to get it on paper, at least one solution, which you can use as your test case. Okay. So let's say you're going to write a program that takes a number and returns a square. Okay. If I know that five squared is equal to 25, I can solve that program and I can check my answers. Okay. And that's a simple example, but that's the idea. Okay. So, so you have to also figure out on a program, what's the input to the program? What should the program know? What will the user input? Um, are there limitations on what the user can input? Do we need to check for that? Again, pretty early on, like in Python, we're going to be pretty you know, free and easy when it comes to checking for proper input. We're going to assume that they're entering the right things. But as we go on, we have to start thinking about that. We have to start trying to keep the user or not allow the user to make mistakes if we can avoid it. Okay, So we'll do some more checking as we go along. Okay, so if the problem a problem is complex, then we need to divide our program into pieces. And you'll see me do that. I, I call that scaffolding. I've heard that used in other terms in other situations, like you'll scaffold a paper, paper. But the idea being, I'll put some comments before I write any code in the editor showing in this section, I'm going to ask for the input. In this section, I'm going to do these calculations. In this section, I'm going to print out the results. By putting those steps in there, uh, it's giving me, it's breaking up the big problem into a smaller, you know, group of smaller problems, which is important, okay? Um, you have to know what you're doing, okay? You have to, to have a good idea from that, okay? So they give some examples at the end of the book on how this would work, how to solve the problem. In the first one, they've got, um, you want to find the perimeter and the area of a rectangle, Okay. So for that, we need the length times the width. Okay, so we have to, to get that somehow. So our algorithm will be get the length, get the width. Then we're going to use what formulas do we need? Okay, the formula for the perimeter is two times length plus width. And the area is length times width. So I ask for the information. I calculate the perimeter. I calculate the area. I print those out on the screen. Okay, there's another example uh, that talks about doing sales tax, a little more complicated. And then one more uh, about calculating the monthly paycheck, okay? All these, and there's a fourth one as well, um, and a fifth one, there are lots. And they get more complicated as we go, okay? So these are all um, examples on how to go through the problem-solving process, okay? And that, that's a good thing to know, okay? So... The last little bit of the chapter talks about some programming methodologies. Um, what we're doing at the beginning is called structured design, also called top-down design, um, modular programming, things like that. That's what we're doing, okay? We will eventually, and that's what we're doing in Python too, we will eventually get to object-oriented programming, uh, just like we did in Python, with classes and, and all that stuff, okay? But that's, that's where we're at. So C++ does both, okay? And that's really all there is to chapter one, okay? So um, 
this video you should watch before Tuesday's class. We'll we'll do a lot Tuesday since we've been out. Hopefully we'll be in Tuesday. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to go ahead and move into chapter two. So there'll be another video come out probably Wednesday for Thursday's class. Okay. In that, we're going to, going to expand what we know. We're going to talk about uh, the basic components of the program, uh, which are you know, functions, symbols, identifiers. We're going to look at some simple data types. Okay. We're going to do math. We're going to do the different arithmetic operators. We're going to have our first example of the string data type, okay, which will hold characters. Okay. We'll talk about assignment, assignment statements, variable declarations. Um, we'll input uh, information into our program. Okay. We'll look, talk about the increment and decrement operators. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about the preprocessor directives. We'll talk about debugging. Um, how to comment, how to to uh, comment our programs to make sure that they're they're properly put together, okay? And uh, we'll talk about some compound statements and kind of go from there. So there's a lot of basic stuff we're going to be doing in Chapter 2. And I think we can probably cover most, if not all, of that on Thursday, okay? So again, the way this works, you'll watch the video before class. We'll get to class. This won't be for Tuesday. This will be for Thursday. You'll get to class, and I'll give you a program that you will work on during class. Okay, and that'll be the basic way things work. Okay, so that should get us going on that. Oh, let's 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 get out of here. Okay, so Control X, Control C will get me out of the program. Do I want to save it? Sure. Okay. Uh, when I want to get off of the system, I type in the word exit. Okay. Um. And then you're off, and that's good. Then you can close down the program and go on, okay? Um, that should do it. If you have other questions, <clears throat> make sure you let me know, either um, before class on Tuesday or you can wait till class on Tuesday.